Dzień za dniem, noc za nocą. Nasze życie upływa pod bezkresnym niebem. Marzymy o rzeczach wielkich, ale życzymy sobie rzeczy prostych. Myślami wybiegamy do przodu, ale jesteśmy świadomi, że życie toczy się tu i teraz. Spoglądamy w niebo z dobrego miejsca na ziemi. Witajcie drodzy uczniowie. Czy widzicie na ekranach tę charakterystyczną czerwoną budkę? Tak, to jeden z symboli Wielkiej Brytanii. Podobno takie budki można nawet kupić na różnego rodzaju portalach aukcyjnych. No to tak tytułem wstępu jako ciekawostkę powiedziałem do lekcji języka angielskiego, którą dla was poprowadzi już za chwilę pan Grzegorz Fidala. Dzień dobry panie Grzegorzu. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you very much for this beautiful introduction because it is very important for today's lesson. So uh, you were told uh, about this red phone box, which you all think about um, a typical symbol of London, of Great Britain. But in fact, if you go to the United States, the place from which you want to make a phone call is called completely different, maybe not completely, but a little bit different, because what British people call red phone box, the Americans call phone booth. So, budka telefoniczna, a place from which you can make a public phone call, um, open for the public, has different names in British and in American English. And this is what today's lesson is all about, about the differences between British and American English. So, uh, you may have noticed that if you watch films, uh, if you read books, if you uh, watch videos on YouTube, that depending on the place um, where people come from, their language can be a little bit different. Sometimes this, these differences, these differences uh, refer to vocabulary, just like we mentioned the phone box. Sometimes they speak in a different melody so their accent is different uh, and sometimes they may even use different grammar. So does that mean that there is not just one English language but many Englishes? Yes and no. So today we're going to talk about this, about um, two most important varieties of English, two most important um, types of English spoken around the world, but these two are not the only Englishes you can meet around the world. So today we are going to look at uh, a little bit of history, of historical overview, how English language evolved, how it was um, changing throughout the years. And then we will look in more details at the specific differences between British and American vocabulary, British and American spelling, um, some element of grammar, but very shortly, and Finally, we are going to listen to um, British and American people speaking about the same things. So let's get started. Um, I just wanted to mention that this lesson is for a little bit more advanced learners. So if you are a secondary student, if you want to learn more about English, uh, especially if you want to know about the differences, this is the lesson just for you. So let's start from a bit of history. And first of all, I wanted to show you a really complicated timeline which represents the history of the English language. I'm not going, to, don't worry, I'm not going to tell you about all the periods of English language history and so on and so forth, but um, I just wanted to show you how many elements um, contributed into this language and how many elements made it so complicated and difficult at the moment because uh, you can see that and you know when you learn English that some things are written differently, some things you write in a different way, you say in a different way and one of my teachers once said that in English we have 100,000 rules and twice as many exceptions. And it's not very far from the truth. Why? 
this is because of the British complicated history of the whole area where Great Britain is now located, where a long, long time ago, uh, from 2,000 years ago, 2,000 years before Christ, it was a land um, where only Celtic tribes lived and they created the origins of, um, of the English language. So first of all, it was a Celtic language, but at some point in history, the Romans with Julius Caesar invaded in, um, the island, giving some elements of Latin, of their language, into English. So uh, it were the Romans who gave uh, the country the name, Britain. It were the Romans who made the names of cities, London, Manchester, um, and so on. But uh, when Romans left the island, we had another wave of invasions. So first of all, there were Angles and Saxons, there were Vikings, and there were also Normans, which were people living in the area of contemporary France. And all these nations contributed um, with their language into English as well. So, uh, for example, uh, about 1,000 years ago, the King of England didn't speak English at all, but he spoke French. And all his nobility, all the, the most important people in the country spoke French too. And this situation lasted, um, lasted for more than 100 years until English language came back with the kings um, coming from the British origin. But what uh, interests us the most is the last period of, um, of the history of the English language, the moment when the British Empire started colonizing more and more countries. So the British sailors were um, coming to um, North America, they went to India, they went to China, and they also um, gave their language to many local places also in Africa, and in every such place where um, those British invaders on one hand, sailors on the other hand, uh, landed and started living, a new variety of English was born. A new type of language, a new melody of language was born. So that's why right now we speak that even though we all go to school and we all learn English, there are smaller and bigger differences between those varieties of English that we can observe around the world. And uh, these, are, these are not only American English and British English that we are going to discuss today, but we can also have Australian English, Canadian English, Indian English, Jamaican, New Zealander and South African English, not also mentioning the fact that if you go to Ireland or if you go to Scotland, which are very close and which are part of Great Britain, people there speak a little bit different language uh, and sometimes much more different language. Sometimes it's even uh, not possible to understand for a person who studied English uh, at schools like me and you. But this is not the point of our lesson. Today we are looking at British and American English, uh, which are the two most important varieties. And all of us who learn in Poland usually um, learn British English. This is the type of English we learn in most European countries because we have contact with people from Britain most often. But if you are born in China or in um, Saudi Arabia, for example, you are much more probable to you know, start learning American English in your school because of the um, contacts of these countries with the United States. Let's now look at some most important differences in terms of vocabulary. And vocabulary is one of the biggest areas where we see the differences, starting from very basic things. Let's start from food. I'm sure you know some of these examples, but some of them may be new to you. First of all, oh, sorry, it's not food first. First we have the clothes. So if you look at me, I'm wearing black trainers on my feet. Whereas the American person would say that I'm wearing black sneakers. So if you watch films about teenagers, you may hear sneakers much more often um, than trainers at the moment because of the fact that pop culture, American pop culture, is so much present in the world. The same situation happens with sweater and jumper. 
Jumper and sweater are both uh, blues up, but you may be more familiar with uh, sweater because it happens more often in the films. Waistcoat and vest are the two words standing for kamiselka and braces in British English and suspenders in American English to są po prostu szelki. Okay, let's move on. Some other interesting um, examples belong to the area of food. So when the British people speak about courgettes, the Americans mention zucchinis, which is zucchinia, like in, same in Polish and uh, similar in Polish and in American English. Where British people have aubergine, American people have an eggplant, an eggplant which in both these languages uh, stand for bakwazan. Uh, another uh, example you may be familiar with. British people love eating sweets, especially chocolate. At the same time, Americans love candies. Now, what is funny is that candy in Britain refers just to one type of sweet, which is cukierek, whereas in America it stands for all słodycze that we can think of. The same happens with candy floss and cotton candy. It may be not very visible in, um, in your screens because of the fact that this beautiful thing and very tasty thing is vata cukrowa. So candy floss in Britain and cotton candy in the United States. Let's move on to um, the, the area of cars and transport. So British people leave their cars in the car park. Americans leave their cars in the parking lot. When a British person wants to see the engine, they open a bonnet, whereas the Americans open the hood, which are two words standing for maska samochodu. The difference uh, happens in the same way when they go to the back of the car to check their luggage, because British people put their luggage in the boot and shopping in the boot, whereas American people put their luggage and shopping into the trunk, which both stand for bagażnik samochodowy. And of course, if you drive your car, the thing you need to have is uh, petrol, if you think about British English, and gas, if you think about American English. That's why a petrol station and the green stations that we have um, also in Torun, Bydgoszcz or other places of our region are short form from British Petroleum, Brytyjskie Paliwo. Americans fill their cars in gas stations rather than in petrol stations. Okay, another area which is very well known to all the boys is sport because of the fact that all Europe and all uh, Britons, of course, play football. Whereas for Americans, the same thing that we call piłka nożna is called soccer. <laughs> uh, if you speak about football to Americans, they use a completely different ball because they have their own variety of football, American football, which is much more brutal and with really complicated rules for those of you who are not familiar with it. Um, another example when it comes to both cars and places you can live. Because in Britain, you are going to live in a flat. And if you go on holidays, you can rent a flat. Czyli mieszkanie. In America, maybe it's because of the size, you don't rent a flat, you rent an apartment. And you can live uh, in an apartment in, um, in the city center. Whereas if you want to get to your apartment, which is in the top floor in Britain, you are going to use a lift. In America, you are going to use an elevator. Um, one more example, that one that I mentioned before, that, that, that one which was mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, that if you want to make a phone call in the street and your battery in your mobile phone uh, is dead, you can use a phone box, which is usually red, in the UK and a phone booth if you are in the States, which are still very popular um, at the moment. Again, if you feel bad and if you have a headache in Britain, you have to go to the chemist. In America, you are going to go to a drugstore or a pharmacy. And uh, to get to the city center in Britain, you are going to take the underground, which in America, especially in New York, is called subway. 
And the last um, quite funny thing about uh, children. In Britain, the thing that you wrap around a little child is a nappy, pielucha. The same thing in America is called a diaper. And another uh, thing which is very useful when you have a really small child is uh, smoczek, which in Britain is called, maybe not very politically correct, a dummy, whereas in America it's called a pacifier, so pacificator, um, it really gives you an idea what this object is necessary for. So this is more or less, uh, one more example, two more examples, um, torch and flashlight for Latarka, mobile phone and cell phone na komurke, rubbish and garbage in terms of śmieci and bin and trash can when we speak about śmietnik, which is the object where you put your rubbish or garbage. And now we will go to the area of spelling because British people and American people sometimes spell their word in a different way but what is good information for you is that both of them are correct. So whenever you are writing a, a composition, whenever you are writing a text for your teacher or at the exam, no matter which type, which variety of English you use, both of them will be correct. If you speak about, for example, color, look at the, uh, look at the spelling of this word. In British, we spell it C-O-L-O-U-R. In America, we put it simple, C-O-L-O-R, color. The same happens with, uh, for example, check. C-H-E-Q-U-E in Britain, C-H-E-C-K in, in the United States. Same um, pronunciation, but spelling is really different. Theater, theater, even the simple thing like a color. In British English, you call it gray with E. In American English, you spell it gray with the letter A in the middle. One more, behavior, neighbor, favorite, humor, and rumor. And as you can see, very often, um, if not always, the American spelling is much more simple because of the fact that at some moment of history, uh, their lexicographers and scientists decided to keep things simple, to spell them the way they hear rather than the way they had it um, from Britain. Um, another way of spelling and which combines spelling and pronunciation, when you learn the song, when you are in primary school and you learn the song about the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and, and here the story goes. In American English, you, you sing Z. In British English, you say Z. So W, X, Y, Z, that's why you say that an animal starting from Z is a zebra in Britain and a zebra in the United States. The thing you put at the end of a sentence is called full stop in Britain, a period in the United States. And so on and so on and so forth. These are the most important differences between the words. Now we come to grammar. And here, um, these pieces of information are more hap are happening more often in um, conversation rather than in written English. But of course, in written English, it happens too. So the first big difference in grammar is with prepositions. This is one of the hardest things um, for people to learn when they learn English. And as you can see, uh, in Britain, you usually say, I talked to Jane, I talked to my friend yesterday. In America, you will say, I talked with my friend, but don't worry, both these versions are correct, which is good for you. The same way you um, spend time at school from Monday to, s to Friday when you are in Britain, but from Monday through Friday when you are in the United States. You um, meet your friends at the weekend in Britain, but on the weekend in the United States, and you haven't seen your friends for a long time in Britain, and you haven't seen in a long time in the United States. So this is, I guess, good piece of information because in this way, even if you have um, those two options, it's much better than having just one, which is the only correct when you have to learn for a test. One more difference, one more big difference is in the use of the past tense. 
So one of the tenses that Polish students really don't like, present perfect, czyli proszę pana, proszę pania, kiedy używamy tego czasu? Well, in British English we say, have you eaten your lunch yet? Czy już zjadłeś swój lunch? The Americans ask it in the simple past tense. Did you eat? Did you do your homework? Yes, I did. Yes, I ate. Not I have eaten. But this is something um, that is really high level and don't worry, nobody is going to, um, to test you on that um, in your school. And the last fragment, the last thing is pronunciation. So you may hear from my voice that I used to learn uh, British English. If I studied in Texas, I would speak in, with a different accent and I would speak in a different way. I'm not very good at um, showing British and American accents, but I would like you to watch a couple, a British man, an American woman, who speak about their child, and not only about their child, uh, using words which are typical for British and American English. So, have a look at this video. Just a second. Holiday. He loves this floaty. It's a Nilo. Yeah. Hey, babe, can you grab my purse? There you go. Oh, this is my wallet. I wanted my purse. That's a purse. No, this is a wallet. This is a purse. Can't believe he's 16 pounds. He's just over a stone. He has more boogers than normal. Stogies, but whatever. So fries, side of chips. Hey, I wanted chips. Those are chips. These are crisps. No, those are chips. No, those are chips. These are fries. These are chips. I wanted chips. You got chips. These are crisps. This city is dirty. I know. The pollution in Los Angeles is crazy. No, the city. Los Angeles is a city. This is a couch. If you are interested in more differences between British and American English, it's enough for you to Google those words, this, this phrase, or watch some other videos on YouTube. So this time is all for me. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And uh, well, let's discover some more uh, differences and similarities between English, uh, British English and American English next time. But don't worry, although these two people in the video are quite uh, quarrelsome and they have a problem with communicating with each other, Normally, British people and American people can normally talk to each other, understand each other, they watch the same films, they read the same newspapers and books, and uh, no matter which language, which variety of English you are going to learn, you will be able to communicate with them as well. So that's all from me for today. Thank you very much. I to byłoby na tyle języka angielskiego. Dziękujemy panu Grzegorzowi. Do zobaczenia na następnej lekcji. Thank you. Goodbye.